Hey guys, Eileen Vick here for Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. And today I am doing a video on the African Glamour book, which I just got. I have done a walkthrough of it, so if you want to see that, just look through my videos. And I am going to be working on this particular page. I think that you'll enjoy seeing the progress of it. This is my scrap page because I wanted to play around with some things. Um, I'm specifically going to be working on the parrot. Maybe a little bit on this. We'll see how much time. And what I want to show you tonight is a little bit uh, different blending and just some things to look out for when you're doing that. So we've got some um, straightforward techniques for you. And hopefully you'll pick up some new information. All right. So, let me see, got to grab my little paper towel, put my hand on, which I always forget to do, but that's okay. You guys are great about reminding me. All right, so let's start at the top. And I'm going to try and keep the finished one. Well, I can't do that because I've got to zoom in, so that's all right. All right. So there's what I'm working on. And I want a very deep red. Excuse my arm. All right. So I'm going to be working with the... Um, Polychromos number 924. Oh, let me get there. Yeah, there you go. Rouge Crimsoni. Crimsoni. All right, so let me do this. I'm going to pull you in just a little closer as well. So this project really, it's um, not too involved per se, but Still some great learning techniques. I'm coloring in little circles here. All right, so let's see how far I want to bring this down. And of course, I'm going to be using my blending pencil. Yeah, and sometimes if you want to mark ahead what you're going to do, that will help. Let's see, so we're not going to do that. Yeah. And we're going to do that one. And that one. And that, those. Okay. And I want very, very vibrant colors for this. I've been seeing um, a number of examples of people that have done colorings that are doing it in very pale colors. And 
Now, I realize that this is the African and, you know, the colors are bright and the whole bit, but I really, really would encourage you to consider brightening up everything that you're coloring. Okay, so now I'm getting to the area where I want to introduce my second color. Hold on, let me go ahead and get this in. Probably to about there. And let's see, I'm going to do, let me switch my light here. Yeah. And again, don't forget that before you use a color somewhere is use it on your scratch paper and then blend it just to see how the color is going to come out. Because if you'll remember on my Chinese slate, the blue that I used came out a lot darker. Okay. Now I'm getting to the point where I want to transition into my orange. So what I'm going to do now, see I'm down to my um, feathers here and this here is I'm going to bring my red a little bit down halfway. And this is where you're going to start getting an interesting look to this. You don't always have to color in an area all the same color. In other words, see how this is where the transition is going to be. All right, that looks good. So now I'm going to go over to my orange, which is my Guanghao number 123. Give me a moment while I sharpen. Okay, and I'm probably going to take my orange to about there. So now I'm going to color right into the red. See, because I want that transition point. And I'm going to leave this chest right here because that is a little bit different. And it's not difficult, folks. It's just, you know, looking where you are. So I'm going to go down to about there. Yeah. I'm working in circles and I am blurring out that transition line between the red and the orange. So I am pressing relatively firmly, about probably about a six or a seven on a scale of 10. 
and I'm gonna take my orange, let's see, so I'm gonna make that orange all the way, and that orange all the way, and then I'm gonna start getting to my half points, so. And again, I've got the chest part right here, so I'm gonna wait on that. See, it's right here is the same. So you need to really pay attention, like I said, to where you are. Let's see here. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to half orange on this next set. Now, another thing that I want you to notice, and I made this mistake with the red, is when you end it, you don't want to end it evenly. See, you want to have that, you don't want to straight across, and I did that, sorry, my mistake. So now you want to rough that a little bit. Okay, so I'm doing that with the orange. Oh, that's so pretty. And now I'm going to transition into the yellow. And the yellow I'm probably going to have come down to right about there. There I'm going to have it end underneath. Um, and it's okay to mark your spots if you want, if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. All right. So... Now I'm going to work my yellow, coloring right over that orange. And let's see here. I gotta go back a little bit here. I'm gonna finish these two orange because originally I was gonna come down into this, but that's a chest area. So let me finish that. Alright, so that's chest, that's plant, plant. I make that chest okay so gonna end that one about there this one I'll end about there and you can see now how really neat this is starting to look And normally I don't like to work in the opposite direction of the drawing, but I am going to there. All right, so now I'm gonna come down about this far. And again, you might be saying, well, how do I know how far to come down? Let me turn this. Well, that's up to you. Let's see.
by the way, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because I may have been looking at this wrong. See, this to me right here is like a chest area. Excuse my arm. I accidentally colored that little circle right there. So as I got to coloring this, <clears throat> I realized that these two ovals right here are actually part of this branch thingy. So I can bring that orange down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so that'll be that. Yeah, see how I'm doing? <coughs> Pick that up. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me while I sharpen. Okay, so <clears throat> now I've got my ragged edge. Let me pull out for my yellow. So I've got my red, my orange, my yellow. And the next one's going to be my green. And let's see. So I've got a nice light green that I'm using. The Guang Hao um, 142. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that to me is beautiful already, and I haven't even blended it yet. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the a light green here. Be sure you get your overlap into each color. Now, if you don't feel comfortable uh, moving as fast as I'm moving, that's fine. You got to remember I've done this quite a bit. You can always stop the video and do your portion that you're doing. Now I just want to make sure I don't color something I shouldn't. Let's see here. So we're going to come down with that and this. And we'll come out like that. And there. Don't forget, as I always tell you, that when you lift your pencil, turn it slightly to keep it sharpened. Okay, so I'm not going to color this because I think that's part of the background.
Okay, now I'm gonna transition into my next color. Uh, let's see. So I'm gonna go part way down and leave it jagged. Part way down, leave it jagged. Part way down. And by jagged, I mean to leave you where you're ending your pencil. Don't make it even, right? Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so let's make sure you can see. Yeah. Part way down, jagged, part way down, jagged, part way down, jagged. Okay. Now I'm going to take a darker green. Give me a second while I get one here. And I do apologize, I thought I had the one I wanted out. I'm so sorry, my mistake. But that's why you love me. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to have a slightly darker green. maybe background right there so I'm not going to touch that but you know what guys even if you do no biggie quit beating up on yourselves for making mistakes bring this green down here okay and you know notice I've left it rough here it's okay it's only because I just really haven't blended yet. And notice I can blend up into the green for a really nice effect here. In fact, I'm gonna tinge the end of these here. 
where it was green, I'm gonna throw a little of this on here. Okay. All right, so now I've got my green. Now I'm going to go with, let me see here, double checking, yeah, an aqua blue. And look how great that looks. Let me sharpen my pencil here. So my aqua blue is the Prismacolor 992, if you're following. And excuse me while I take a little water. Okay. So my aqua blue. Oh yeah, look how that beautifully transitions. Now, when you pick colors like this, you want to pick colors that will transition. In other words, you don't wanna go from one abrupt color to another. And this green to this blue is perfect. Again, I'm gonna leave rough ends. Why that's hard to tell. Hold on a second while I look at this. Okay, I know that one is a feather. Okay, so now I gotta start figuring out. Okay, so this one, this one is, yeah, that one's a feather. And this one's a feather. I think that's an open space. I think that's a feather. So I'm going to color just a little bit there. If I've missed one, of course, I can always go back. All right, so there's my aqua blue. Now I'm going to go with a light blue, which is a Faber-Castell 152. 
Obviously, I use this one a lot. Hopefully, I have a replacement for it. It's getting kind of low. Yes, I do. Um, if you've watched my videos before, as you can see, that one is black, one is not. So when I use my last pencil, I go ahead and I color it with a black permanent marker and that tells me I need to buy a new one. So I have bought a new one and it's in my new jar. And when I take it out of my new jar, I will color it black. All right. So I've got my light blue, which blends beautifully with this color. And see how I'm going up into my previous color, which is fine. You want that transition. Okay. All right. And again, let me show you the one I did. Now, obviously, I missed some of the areas that were supposed to be open. So, it's all right. I'm fixing it now. Okay, let's see. All right, so that's a feather there. And again, it looks like I'm a little rushed. I'm not really, um, for two reasons. Number one, um, just, I already have the skill here, so it doesn't take me as long. But the other reason is, I know I'm going to be blending all of this. So, at this point, I'm not, like, super, super worried about coverage. Don't forget, when you get into little corners circular corners, rounded corners, make a little circle with your pencil. All right, I'm gonna come down a little further with that. Come down with that. Now again, I'm starting my blue a little bit above where I need to. Sure, what to do about this right here? Hmm. See what's driving me crazy? I've got this feather coming up, and then it like seems like it ends here, and then it comes into that. So I'll have to make a decision about that in a minute. This is obviously okay. So let me get this blue because that's a feather. It is now. Okay. This is a feather because if I trace it down, it goes down to here. Okay. Okay, good. And I'm 
And down here. Alright. And I oopsied a little bit here. Yeah, I'm very happy with how this is coming out for you. Okay, so I've got this light blue there. time I pick up my pencil I go ahead and give it a quick little turn oh that is not a feather shoot okay yeah see how this comes out into the open okay well, and I know if I erase that it's it's I mean it's so dark okay so I'm gonna get my pan and I'm going to, let's see if we can fix this. Make that go like that, and that go like that. Now it's a feather. All right, see how I drew in those two lines? That right there and there. It is now a feather. Okay, so now I'm bringing this down. pull out a little bit so you can get an overall view so far. I remember I haven't blended this yet. Okay. Uh, let's see where we are. Okay. So I'm going to color that. Dark this blue. So now, boy, I'm going to leave that open and just go ahead and color this. And yes, I'm just coloring it on one side for the moment. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so there's that so far. Okay, so now I'm going to take a very dark blue. And I'm going to sharpen it. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. I do that I'm gonna bring this blue these blues down a little further because yeah 
yeah, I think we're good. All right. So now I'm going to take my darkest blue. Watch this. Ha <laughs> ha! And the lead broke. Okay, and now I'm going to take this darkest blue, let's zoom down a little bit. Look at that, how, oh dang it, Ugh. you know these are Guang Hai pencils and I have had them break and had them break and had them break. I don't know what the problem is, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy them again. Ugh. Yeah, here's the pencil. If you haven't had problems with them, fine, but I don't know what it is. They break and they break and they break. All right, anyway, look at this. So it's a beautiful, beautiful transition from the medium blue to the dark blue. All right. And given that I am right-handed, I really should be starting this on the left-hand side. Look how beautifully this dark blue complements the medium blue. And it broke again. Okay, so there's a really nice mix of the blues here. So now I'm going to be working on this feather right here. Okay, that's it. 
Bear with me a minute while I match the color with something else. This pencil is going into the trash can as soon as I find a replacement. Right now, I am very, very annoyed. Mm, that's close. Okay, I found a replacement. All right, so this is my Vivo Blue. They do not, or Vivid, Sivo, Vivid, excuse me, they don't number theirs. I just numbered it number four so that I knew. All right, so let me sharpen and keep going. I'm so sorry for the delay. Okay, hopefully this one won't keep breaking. All right. Oh, much better. And remember when you're in small places, outline first and then fill in. There we go. Notice that I'm darkening the edge with a darker color. Here's where my lighter color was. And let me pull you out just a tad. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to my next feather. So look at the nice, let me get the glare off, look at the nice transition of blue on there. So we've got a light, a medium, and a dark.
see how fast that goes if I outline first. All right. Let's see here. So we've got this one yet. just a little bit more all right again not super critical because I haven't blended yet all right I'm gonna pull you out get an overall what's going on let me get the glare off of it and edge that darker right there. And I'm gonna outline. And I'm just going up this blue and using my darker pencil to outline right there a little bit. That's why you have to have compatible colors going from one to the other because then you can drag them into each other and make some really nice effects. All right, darken that just a little bit. All right. Ah, oh, it looks beautiful. All right. Let's get this done here. This done here. We're making great progress. All right, let me brush that. only a couple more to go and then I can blend
looks beautiful. Okay, and I went outside the line a little bit here. You may not see it. I do. Bugs me. There we go. Okay, so let me pull up here so you can see the whole thing now. Is that not gorgeous? All right, so I'm gonna start blending now. It will not take long, so stick with me. This is where it's gonna be critical that you keep your the tip of your blending pencil clean. So I'm going to start with the red. And I'm just going to go over it. It doesn't take long. You can move promptly, but don't get reckless. And you can see how this particular red, which I knew it would blends into a really nice color there we go Okay, now I'm getting into my orange, so I want to merge those colors. I don't really want a solid red, and what I'm going to do, I'm even going to use my pencil and make that just a little more jagged than it was. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my blending tip and I'm now going to hit the orange. Yeah. 
into the yellow. And I'm avoiding hitting the red. Okay. And then I'm going to clean off the orange. And the yellow is now going to go into the green. And I'm going to keep going right over the green because the yellow is lighter than the green. So we're in good shape there. I won't have any color carryover. So I'm going to pop right down, keep going. I'm pressing probably a four or a five. All right, let me clean this off. Now I'm going to go into the blues. And all I'm really doing now is just blending away any white spots that I see. a feather right there okay fix that in a moment now you don't want to blend too much because you don't want to lose the distinction between the two colors So now I'm going to be start being very judicious here. and you don't have to scrub, you're just pushing your colors to make sure that you don't have any spots. Okay, so let me pull out. Okay, now I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm not gonna do the 3D effect on the feathers yet because I'm already an hour with you but stick around because I want to show you one more little thing I'm going to do. Let's see, and I've just got a couple spots here. I got to get myself one of those electric erasers. Okay. Now I am going to take um, a Sharpie. This is a neat little touch to the bird. Get my cord out of the way here. All right, and you know me, I like to add my little extra doodads. Hold on, let me fix this one that I missed, which is right here.
All right. All right, so I'm gonna take my, it's a, it's a super fine point Sharpie. Now, watch this little touch. I'm going to, this will glare. Sorry for hitting the camera, my fault. I'm going to tip each feather. Will not take long at all. I want you to watch this. going to be a little weird right there but that's all right all right so I'm just taking it and I pull you in and then I'm bringing up a side a little bit just so it doesn't look weird so you make your tip and then bring it up a little bit Got a little cleanup to do, but that's fine. Make your tip, bring it up a little bit. Make your tip, bring it up a little bit. On one side. Make your tip, bring it up on one side. Look how neat that looks. Make your tip, bring it up on one side. Make your tip, bring it up. Boy, I hate that sound. Jesus, please help the people that are in that ambulance. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring that tip up, and I'm gonna hit that tip right there too, I think. I think that'll be neat. Yeah. And we got a little tip here. And you might say, well, why bother? Because you've got such dark blue. Well, it does make a difference, it really does. It just gives you a little extra kick. And actually, what I'm also going to do while I'm looking at this is I'm going to go ahead and these little outcrops here, I'm going to tip that just a teeny tiny bit. a little bit of a line and then tip that oh yeah see you don't need much at all and again guys it's that little attention to detail that really makes your your colorings you might say well why bother well because it really just makes them now in the camera i'm seeing a lot of roughness yet on the blues you know when i pull it away and just look at it from normal distance it's not there but i will double check that with my pencil there 
I'm really hoping that you can see the difference that this makes. It's a little hard to see on the blue, but you can see it. I can really see it. Okay, now, while I'm looking at this too, So then the next question is, well, there are little frilly things all the way up. So guess what? I'm going to go ahead and do them. So I'm going to do a little there and do a little there. I'm going to do a little there. Oh, that looks cool. A little there. Just these little touches that make all the difference. Just a little there. Making I'm all I'm doing is making little U's here. And wow, what a difference. Look how cool that looks. All right, so I don't see any more. I don't think I've missed anything. Okay. What I'm gonna show you real quick, but I'm not gonna do it on video, is I'm gonna go ahead and darken in, get something I can point with. I'm gonna darken these lines a little bit to make like a 3D effect. I'll probably, um, haven't decided yet what I'm going to use, but when I do it, I will show you. Excuse me. All right. I'm starting to get the hiccups. Yeah, I've got all my little doodads. <clears throat> I got the hiccups. All right. So let me pull out. Let me pull up so you can see. Yeah. In fact, let me do this. I'm going to get straight over my drawing. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? So, all those little details, like adding the black to the tip, yeah, it's coming out beautifully. All right. Oh, one more quick thing. I'm thinking of it is I'm going to go ahead and color in my beak. I do want that to be black. I'm going to, I'm using my marker because it's a true black. Oh, yeah. Love it. Okay, so let me get back lined up for you. Sorry about that. My light's not cooperating. All right, so there it is. I've got the little highlights there. I've shown you how I blended the tail, I t I've, the feathers. I've shown you how I added little touches with the black. I mean, for that matter, if you wanted to, you could go ahead, and I still may do this, is add black little tips on all the feathers. I may just do that. Not gonna do it now though, because I've kept you long enough. So here are some ideas on how to do this. And again, blending with your finger carefully if you want. I just change fingers for the lighter colors. So yeah, I'm liking how it's starting to come out. 
All right, guys, this is Eileen Vick for Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. I hope you learned some stuff. Hope you enjoyed watching this. And um, till next time. All right. Happy coloring, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.